There are lots of things that set us apart as humans, like how we walk on two legs and use language. But today, we're going to talk about a specific anatomical trait that is pretty on the nose. It sets us apart from our closest living relatives, and it's sitting right there in the center of our faces. And you probably already read the title, so you know I'm talking about the nose. No matter the size or shape of your nose, all human noses are clearly distinct from those of any other primates. So why do humans have noses that stick out, but other apes don't? Now, nobody knows for sure, sorry, but there are a few good hypotheses as to why our snouts got so big. And these are going to take us all over our skeleton, from our heads to our toes, and cover a few million years of evolution in the process. Let's start with another part of our bodies that smells our feet. One other clearly human feature is that we walk upright on two feet instead of on all fours. As early humans gradually stood up straighter, the shape of our spines changed from relatively straight and flat, like mammals who walk on all fours, into an S-shaped curve. You can even see a similar change in babies as they grow. Their spines start flat and then curve more as they get older. And this is important because of how it changes the way our brain and spine are connected. See, there's a hole at the bottom of the skull called the foramen magnum, which literally just means big hole, because we like to have fun with naming anatomical features. That's the opening where your brainstem connects to your spinal cord. And when we started walking upright, that new posture changed the way we had to hold our heads to keep our faces forward, which also meant that the foramen had to move. Animals that walk on all four legs, like dogs, have a foramen magnum that sits further back on their skulls. If our foramen magnum was as far back as a dog's is, our natural neck posture would have us staring up at the sky when we were standing on two legs, which is not good. And a lot of other stuff had to shift to allow that foreman to move into place. Generally, human skulls can be divided into two sections. The upper section is the neurocranium, which surrounds the brain, and the lower section is the splanchnocranium, consisting of our jaw and nose. And as you bend the base of a human skull into an upright position and scoot that foreman forward, it compresses the size of the splanchnocranium. This reduces the degree Degree that your jaw and lower face sticks out relative to your upper face. When you compare a chimp's face with a human's, the chimp's teeth are way out in front of the forehead, but ours are much more in line. That's because the chimps have got much longer, larger jaws than we do. The size and prominence of our jaws likely decreased because of all that skeletal rearranging, but also as a result of our changing diet. You need big, strong jaws and teeth if you have to rely on chewing and grinding a ton of plants to get your nutrients. As an example, hominins from the genus Australopithecus had giant molars that dwarfed our dainty little chompers, and much larger jaws than ours, too. But these guys were pretty much devoted herbivores. Over time, humans started hunting and eating more meat, which takes less chewing power than eating plants. We also started to cook our food, which makes it softer and means that our jaws have even less work to do. That is what allowed our jaws to start shortening up. They just didn't need to be that big, so why bother keeping them that big? So in terms of our noses, sticking out is actually a bit of a side effect. It's not because our noses had a reason to move out, it's because everything below them moved in. And it wasn't just that our splanchnocraniums got smaller, our neurocraniums also got bigger. As the intellectual demands on early humans increased, our brains grew, and so did this part of our skull. Going back to our changing posture, even just the brain power needed to balance on two feet could have been a reason for Homo erectus having a larger brain. So our nose may have also been essentially pushed outwards by our expanding brain. Some scientists even think that our protruding nose may act as a radiator, helping cool our brains. The blood vessels in our noses help dissipate heat, and the act of yawning could stimulate exchange of this cold blood with the hot blood from our brains. So that's the story of how every human on the planet got our cute little protruding noses. The evolutionary story of our honkers might have seemed simple before, but now you know, it's not. Oh my god. They're for booping! That's why we have them, to boop. Hey, did you know? that the reason you get to watch this is because there's a bunch of people over on Patreon who make this channel possible. Without them, there would be none of the unhinged corny nose puns. With their support, and possibly yours, I don't know, maybe you're one of our patrons, we can sniff out stories like this one to bring them to all of you. Our patrons also get access to a ton of neat perks, like a monthly patron-only podcast, blooper reels, and our private Discord server. To learn more, head on over to patreon.com slash scishow. 